This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Riley Smith. Well, good day and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Today is Thursday, December 8th, 2022. We're so glad you could join us today. In today's episode of Ag Matters PM, I talk with Iowa State climatologist, Dr. Justin Glisson. Now, we discussed last week's drought monitor, but a lot of that information is still relevant now as we haven't seen much change to that. And we're really getting into that uh, freeze period here soon where that Drought is really going to be solidified in the ground. So lots of great in, uh, conversation with Justin today. We also have a check of that Ag Weather Outlook. But first, let's run down the markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. Well, we are at the end of another trading day in the ag marketplace. And for a bit of analysis, we go to Caden Sweeney of agmarket.net. Uh, first off, Caden, how did the grain markets do today? Yeah, we're kind of in a, a market, in my opinion, that's being mostly driven by soybeans. Um, kind of got two things going on there. You've got good, strong exports that have been going on in the soybean market and, and also some dryness down in Argentina um, as, they, as they work on growing their crop. So been really supportive, I guess, soybean meal firstly, um, which which then influences soybeans. And I think, uh, you know, that's kind of followed through. We're finally seeing corn kind of gain some footing as well. But but my opinion, it's it's kind of a soybean market right now, followed by everything else. And of course, we had the export sales report come out today as well. Uh, today's report, not necessarily as negative as the others we've been seeing. How's that factoring into the marketplace? Yeah, pretty good report today. Um, close to or maybe a little bit over 1.7 million metric tons in the in last week and uh, and really we've also seen about another 1.4 million on the daily wires this week uh, China and unknown um, had about 800,000 just today alone million metric tons so export market really for beans looks pretty good sales wise we're a little bit ahead of where we were last year and and so I think uh, certainly a good thing going forward I think if this continues you may have to see um, USDA do a little bit of of uh, improving exports on the WASI report. All that won't happen uh, tomorrow, probably won't be until later in, um, in 2023. Right, and speaking of that uh, WASI report, of course, we never know exactly what's going to appear in the report, but what are we expecting from tomorrow? Is this tomorrow kind of a, just a wrapping up the end of the year, maybe not a ton of information in it? You're exactly right. Yeah, not expecting much from tomorrow. Um, Really wouldn't be surprised if they reprint uh, November's report. If anything, um, you know, they always could change use just a little bit. I don't think they'll touch the production numbers, but um, anything outside of a uh, 50 million bushel change on corn carryout will be will be a surprise, I think. Um, and really for beans too, not expecting much of a change uh, until we get to January. That's when the that's when the real deal shows up. I guess uh, thinking of next year as well, here in the Midwest, we really didn't get the uh, moisture that we needed uh, you know, to kind of fight off these drought conditions we've been facing. And of course, coming up pretty soon, we're going to finally have that deep freeze from the winter. Now, looking ahead into kind of the spring area, are we going to have concerns about uh, crop conditions, getting crop in the ground? Obviously, planting season, we don't mind that uh, dry weather. But you know, is this drought that we weren't able to stop this year going to have impacts that could cause concerns in the markets next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, a lot of the the theme we saw during harvest, or I, I guess during last year's growing season as well, is the eastern corn belt was in pretty good shape. The western corn belt was pretty dry. I think that's continued to be the case. Haven't really seen any any uh, fixing that yet. And so, yeah, if that continues going forward into the spring, like you said, we may be able to get the crop in decent um, condition wise. But then you got to make it grow too. You know, so definitely um, need to need to see a good drought ender, I guess, uh, in the Western Corn Belt, those guys are hurting and, and they really need one for sure. All right. And then what about the other side of the ag marketplace and the livestock complex? How are they trading today? Yeah. So uh, in my opinion, feeder cattle look the best of the three, followed by fats and then hogs have been um, hurting pretty bad really in the last few days. So 
Um, start with feeders first. You know, we kind of have a double bottom. Looks like going in and we've made new highs, so uh, feel good about that. Uh, fat cattle market, 200-day um, moving average is held. They've seen some weakness, but that moving average is held, so we like to see that. And then hogs um, really have given back all the gains that they had at the end of last week. We're actually looking at potentially a key reversal on the weekly chart, which is not a good thing. So really want to see a, a good close tomorrow. Um, hopefully they'll find some footing and, and turn back around. Now, of course, the holiday demand at this point is probably mostly out of the marketplace. You know, stores that have needed to purchase the holiday meats have probably done so already. So are we entering kind of a low period for a meat demand in the U.S.? I think we could. Um, yeah, on, on, a, on a shorter term scale, definitely. Um, in the bigger picture, I think the main um, livestock wide is still pretty good. I think it will continue to hold up. Um, and I think the funds will continue to to at least want to remain some ownership in livestock. So not super concerned about anything completely falling out of bed. Although, um, like I said, want to see hogs find some buying here soon um, or, you know, could get worse before it gets better. All right, Caden, lots of great information today for those of our listeners and our viewers who'd like to get in touch and learn more from the folks at agmarket.net. How can they do that? Yeah, go to our website, agmarket.net. Um, feel free to reach out to any of our brokers. Um, we can get you set up for free trial of our research and, and kind of what we provide. Um, and if you want to reach me directly, my line is 815-691-2672. All right, Caden. Well, thanks again for visiting with us today, and we look forward to talking with you again soon. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Have a good one. That again was Caden Sweeney of agmarket.net. We'll go ahead and take a look at how those numbers closed. That's courtesy of the folks at Bar Chart. March corn is up one and a quarter at 642 and a half. January soybeans up 14 and a quarter at 1486 and a quarter. January soybean meal up 740 at 46640. January soybean oil up 35 at 6131. Chicago wheat down three and a quarter at 746 and a quarter. Minneapolis spring wheat up seven and a half at 909 and a half. Kansas City hard red wheat down four even at 844 and three quarters. March oats down two and three quarters at 330 even. On the Merck, December live cattle up 50 at 152.42. January feeders up 257 at 183.47. December lean hogs down 37 at 82 even. Pork cutout down 90 at 87.22. And December Class 3 milk down 4 cents. And that's been a check of the markets here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, I talk with Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Like I said, last week I talked with Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson about the U.S. drought monitor and just the weather that's going on in Iowa right now. Now, of course, we do have a new drought monitor for this week, but the information from last week is still relevant as we haven't seen many changes to that. And of course, we had plenty of great discussion on what the weather is shaping up to be like for this winter. Well, we're here with Iowa State climatologist, Dr. Justin Glisson. It's been a couple of weeks, but we're back to talk about the U.S. drought monitor and a bit on the climatological patterns in Iowa. So first off, Justin, um, you know, even though it's been a couple of weeks, you said the drought monitor kind of knew that and stayed a little bit the same. So what's the status uh, on that front? Yeah, so status quo. We, uh, when we don't see any changes, improvement, or degradation across the, the drought map, we call that status quo. And but that's what we've seen over the last uh, few weeks. We've had some measurable rainfall across the state, as well as some widespread snowfall across northwestern Iowa. Now, you don't get a lot of uh, water content out of snowpack, but any moisture is beneficial when you're in a widespread drought, as we are especially northwestern Iowa, where those uh, precipitation deficits going back two and a half years approach uh, 25 inches. So overall, no real impetus to change the map, but we have, we have seen some beneficial moisture. Right. And, uh, you know, with that drought condition, you know, we're getting towards the, the point of the year, you know, we're in December already, where we're going to start to see that, you know, final big freeze you know, at this point, are we really expecting that we're not going to get the moisture and we're just going to have to, you know, see how that plays out in the spring? 
it's looking that way. We're in the short term outlooks getting out into the middle of December. We're seeing elevated probabilities of colder than average temperatures. So it's looking like we're going to start to see the profile freeze. And especially where the, there are drier soils, we do freeze faster and have a potential to freeze deeper. Uh, so, you know, if we do get a snowpack on the ground through the winter, that does help to insulate somewhat and prevent a, a frost line deeper into the profile. Uh, and, and that's what we'd like to see. We would like to see a snowpack getting through winter. Typical La Nina years in which we are, the third year of a winter La Nina, we typically see above average snowpack across the state. So this could be beneficial as we do get into early spring, as we start to thaw out the profiles and melt that snowpack to get additional infiltration of uh, moisture into the profiles. So speaking of that uh, La Nina weather pattern, uh, you, know, you mentioned is, this is the third year that we've seen it in a row. Uh, you know, how is that looking to uh, affect this winter as we really get into that season? So if the La Nina acts like it should, and we have analog years of La Nina going back to 1950. Now, when we talk about where we are now, we're in what we call the triple dip La Nina, three consecutive winters of La Nina conditions. We only have two of those on record going back to 1950. So anomalous behavior. But if we do behave as we should in La Nina's, a weak La Nina phase. Uh, we should see above average snowpack across the state and basically colder than average temperatures to near normal temperatures. And that's what we're seeing in the wintertime outlook, December, January, February being meteorological uh, winter in which we do see an elevated probability of colder conditions and then a slightly elevated signal for wetter conditions across eastern Iowa and then what we call equal chance across western Iowa, meaning an equal chance of above, below or near average uh, precipitation. So it'll, it'll definitely, if it does act like La Nina as it did in 2020, we should see above average snowpack. 2021 was not an above average snowpack year. In fact, we were about 10 inches below average on snowpack uh, during winter time for the state. So we'll just have to see. And of course, uh, you know, we shouldn't just look ahead and, you know, thinking of right now with the weather that we've been seeing, we've had a couple of pretty cold days, a little bit of snow, but honestly, it's felt kind of mild for what we maybe expect to see at this time of year. Has that been the case or is this kind of a, you know, a pretty status quo year so far? We've had swings definitely in the temperature over the, the last year. We don't get a lot of variability annually when it comes to the an, annual average temperatures. You'll have cold months, you'll have warm months, that, but basically we're never more than a degree above or below average. Uh, if we look at November, we were actually right on the dot for what we would expect climatologically for temperature. Uh, if we look at a fall in general, uh, slightly warmer than average. Uh, but overall, if we look at the the state of the the state of the temperature across Iowa, it's been a near normal uh, year so far. Uh, interestingly, you bring that up. You, we think back to last December and December fifteenth when we hit seventy five degrees. Uh, with the tornado outbreak and the serial derecho that came through the state. So to, so to see a 75 degree reading, which broke the state a daytime high record temperature uh, was a very anomalous event. But uh, right now, if we look at the outlooks, we're, we're trending colder than average as we move through at least the middle of December. Right. And, you know, just thinking about last year and then comparing to this year, like you mentioned, you know, drought monitor being status quo and then nothing too out of the ordinary for this time of year. Honestly, that's more of a blessing sometimes to just not have things uh, go wild as they did last year. It's a climatologist's dream to have near normal behavior or a quiet pattern. Uh, even in drought conditions, uh, you know, we're starting to get in a colder and drier time of year. We definitely could use more moisture, uh, but uh, let's uh, keep that tornado outbreak back last year. We don't need another December tornado outbreak. Uh, and it's looking like a generally quiet pattern as we move through uh, the rest of December. All right. And is there anything else about uh, Iowa's climatological patterns that uh, we should go over today? So we, we are seeing, in at least in the longer term climate models that get us out into the end of winter and early spring, a semblance of a shift from this La Nina phase that we've been stuck in for the last three years to what we call ENSO neutral. And ENSO neutral is it is basically near normal sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific. 
Um, it doesn't impact the atmosphere as much as a La Nina or an El Nino phase. Uh, so when we do look at analog years in which we've transitioned back to ENSO neutral getting into uh, spring, we do typically see cooler than average temperatures, but also uh, a semblance of a wetter pattern. Now, these outlooks will update as we move through winter and better observations are ingested into these models. But at least initially, if we do transition from La Nina to Enso neutral, we, sh we could see a big shift in the large scale weather pattern that could help um, get us uh, precipitation that would start to chip away at these longer term precipitation deficits that we have. All right, Justin, great discussion today, as always, uh, for those of our listeners and our viewers who would like to you know, get in touch and just talk about Iowa's climatological conditions. How can they do that? Yes, three ways. So go on uh, the internet, Google Iowa Climatology Bureau. It'll bring you to the Department of Agriculture's uh, climatology website. It has uh, old records. It has uh, historical reports, climate outlooks, drought monitor, soil temperature, soil moisture. Uh, my contact information is there, but also I'm always happy to chat on the phone. My direct line is 515-281-8981. And my email address is justin.glisson at iowaagriculture.gov. That again was Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson. And speaking of the weather, let's go ahead and take a look at that ag weather outlook. Well, up for the next couple days or so, we're looking at some pretty nice temperatures, but more important than that, a bit of rain or snow, depending on which side of freezing you are on. Now, of course, at this time of year, that can cause inclement weather conditions, especially on the road. If that drizzle freezes up, you might have some slippery conditions. So make sure you're always uh, staying up to date on that and checking with the National Weather Service uh, just on any updates that they have for that. So speaking of the National Weather Service, let's go ahead and take a look at what they have for the next 24 hours. As you can see from the National Weather Service, the forecast is a little bit dreary. Today we have rain likely across much of the state, otherwise it'll be mostly cloudy. Highs ranging from the low 30s to low 40s. Tonight there's a rain or wintry mix across the state. Lows overnight ranging from the upper 20s to upper 30s. And tomorrow expect cloudy skies throughout the state with rain and snow likely in the northeast. Highs ranging from the low 30s to low 40s. And taking a look at tomorrow's affiliate weather map, Cherokee will be mostly cloudy with a bit of rain and a high around 33. Shenandoah partly cloudy and a high of 41. Des Moines cloudy and 37. Waterloo cloudy with a wintry mix and a high around 37 as well. Albia cloudy and 41. And Clinton is looking to be rainy all day with a high around 40. For more detailed forecasts in your part of the state, make sure to check in with your local Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network affiliate. That's been a check of the Ag Weather Outlook, and that also brings us to the end of this episode of Ag Matters PM. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. You can also follow us on social media at Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And you can find all of our video content on our YouTube channel, as well as previous episodes of AMPM. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button to see when those go live. Don't forget as well our free twice-daily market podcast on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Riley Smith. On behalf of Mark Magnuson and Dustin Huffman, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.